Welcome to an introduction to accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and to narrated by David Hopcroft. In this short podcast we are going to continue our work on ratios and we are going to look at the profitability ratio which is related to the return on capital employed. Let's think about what we mean by a return on capital employed. Supposing, for example, that we have money and we invest it in a savings account. At the end of the year we expect that money to have gone up by an amount which we call the interest which we've been paid. So we can determine the rate of return that we are getting on that money that we've invested and that rate of return is basically the interest. So how does an investor seek information of this sort? Well, the investor needs to look at the net assets of a business. In other words, how much has been invested in the business. The net assets are essentially the assets that we have after subtracting the liabilities. And you can find the figure for net assets on the balance sheet. So the return on capital employed then takes the net profit before tax, multiplied by 100, make it a percentage, divided by the total net assets. Right? It's a net profit before tax and the total net assets. So to calculate this ratio we should be looking then at those two things. Net profit, the figure for this, we can obtain by looking at the income statement. And total net assets, as we've just mentioned, we can obtain by looking at the balance sheet for a company or a business. So we're going to take the business of Tropical Designs and the first thing we're going to look at is the income statement and we can see that the figure here which has been highlighted, the figure that we want for net profit is £35,790 and on the balance sheet for Tropical Designs I've again highlighted the net assets figure and that is 33290 so the return on the capital employed is the net profit before tax times 100 over the total net assets, 35,790 times 100 over 33,290, which is 107.5%. This is a somewhat unusual case, as we'll see in a minute, and you'll also find out why. So, before we compare this figure with a rival, let's just stop for a minute and think. The net current assets can in fact vary quite w widely for small traders. Let's compare for example a market stall holder who is renting space and who has a motor vehicle. The only asset the market stall holder really has is the motor vehicle plus any inventory. Consider a small shop where premises are rented. Well, there may be no other assets except inventory. And then consider a small shop where the premises are owned. In other words, the premises become a non-current asset or a fixed asset. Obviously, in those three different situations, three businesses, but with a very different reflection on the balance sheet for the assets. So the income statement for Jiho Clothing shows a net profit of 14,820, which we've highlighted. And on the balance sheet, because the premises are owned, the premises are worth 51,000, or have a net value of 51,000. And that makes our net assets 46,920. So the return on capital employed here, net profit before tax times 100 divided by total net assets, that works out at 31.58%. So why is there such a large difference between this business and that of Tropical Designs? Well quite simply because Tropical Designs doesn't have any fixed assets. So Tropical Designs appears to have a high return on capital invested. Jiho Clothing has a much lower return but has non current assets. Does that mean that Tropical Designs is therefore a much better business? Well, let's look at it from another way just for a moment. You're considering a partnership 
and you are approached by the owners of these two businesses by Tropical Designs and Jiho Clothing. So, what factors might influence your decision? Would you just go on that profitability? Would you just go on that return on capital employed? Or would you look a bit deeper? What risks are you taking? If you basically invest in one of these businesses, which one of them has some assets against which you've got some security for your investment? What additional information might you be invest interested in? What are the plans for the future? How do these trading figures compare year on year? And how much might you be prepared to invest? All these sort of things are questions that you would ask before taking a decision. You wouldn't simply take a ratio and make a decision on the basis of the result of one ratio. That ends our podcast on ratios, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. For further information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit our website www.parkbenchtutors.com or you can find us on Facebook. Thank you.